Hey everybody, Dr. Brett Scher, low carb cardiologist here. I'm here in Austin, Texas. I just went for a great run uh, down by the lake in Austin. Really, really pretty run, but that's not what I'm here to tell you about. I'm here for a sort of like a makeshift uh, college reunion with some buddies. And it's really interesting when you're talking to people you haven't seen in a while and you're sort of talking about what space you're in and what you're doing. I started throwing around terms like ketosis and low carb and autophagy and intermittent fasting. And the one that sort of got the most interest out of this crew, which is generally not healthcare related, was the concept of time-restricted eating and autophagy. And of course, I'm throwing the terms around like it's any old word that everybody should know, but a lot of people don't under understand the concept of autophagy and they wanna know what benefit they can get out of time-restricted eating or time-restricted feeding. So I figured it was worth giving a quick description here um, since I've been doing it all night, basically. but. Autophagy, well, let's start over. Your body is a big multitasker. I mean, think of everything it's doing, all the organ systems that are running. But the way I like to think of it, there's a limit to the multitasking. And when your body is dealing with nutrients on a constant basis, taking in calories and having to either store them as glycogen or burn them for fuel or store them as fat, one of the things that gets forgotten or not done is so-called cellular housekeeping. And when you can reduce that nutrient intake so that your body's not having to deal with calories and nutrition coming in, then all of a sudden your body can turn to cellular housekeeping. And what that means is all our cells in our body are not healthy cells. Hopefully the majority of them are, but we have plenty of cells that are dysfunctional, that the, you know, the mitochondria might not be working well. There might be a mutation in one of the cells. Uh, there are older cells that just can't keep up with the workload. Whatever the case may be, if your body's smart enough to be able to recognize these cells, and break them down, actually sort of destroy the cells and recycle the parts that are good and get rid of the stuff that, that it doesn't need. This is what I call, and a lot of people call cellular housekeeping or autophagy. But it looks like you can only really focus on that when you're not having calories and nutrition coming into your body. And that's one of the benefits of this time-restricted eating. So one of the big questions I got is, well, how long do you have to go? in order to turn your attention to your cellular housekeeping and stimulate autophagy. And there, I guess I don't know the answer is 100%, but I like to say 10 hours. From what I've read, what I've heard, people I've talked to, it seems like after the 10 hour mark, that's sort of when your insulin level is low enough, when your body can sort of register that, okay, sorry, I'm still sweating here from the run. Your body can say, um, all right, uh, I'm not getting any nutrients. I can start to turn my attention to cellular housekeeping and get rid of these old, damaged cells. Um, so about 10 hours, but obviously the longer you can go, the better. So the simple the simple key is once you finish dinner, finish as early as you can, and once you finish dinner, don't eat anymore. Just drink water until the next day for as long as you can, usually around lunchtime and the way our society works. Wake up in the morning, have your black coffee, have your black tea, black, no uh, sweeteners, no additives. Just drink, drink, drink. Make sure you stay very well hydrated. Drink water throughout the day. And then you can push it to 16 or 18 hours to give your body that chance at autophagy and cellular housekeeping. The other benefit though is you can train your body to burn fat. And that's what everybody wants to do, right? We wanna burn our fat, increase our lean body mass when lowering our fat mass. So that's like the double-edged double benefit that you get from that. So I spent a lot of time explaining that to a lot of my friends over this weekend. So I wanted to throw that out there to all of you guys too. That's definitely one of the many benefits of time-restricted eating. And another big one though is psychology. And I love to talk about this one because we're, we're sort of trained. There was a great article in The Onion recently that said um, Americans are now eating one big meal for the entire day, just one meal all day long. And what makes articles in The Onion so great is they point out the absurd that's just this far away from truth because we are sort of eating and snacking all day long. We're training our bodies that any little pang of hunger requires instant nutrient intake. But by doing time-restricted eating, time-restricted feeding, we're teaching our bodies that we don't need that immediate response. We can feel some pangs of hunger and it's okay. We're still gonna function. We'll go do something else and the hunger goes away or we drink a little water and the hunger goes away. We don't need to react to it. So in my sweaty hyperventilatory video here, the summary is to hit autophagy, the cellular housekeeping, you have to go for a period of probably at least 10 hours, but longer is better, of no nutrient intake, just water and hydration. So after you finish dinner, don't eat again, just drink, 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 hydrate well until lunch the next day. Do it a few days a week. You also get the benefits of training your body to burn fat 
and the psychological adaptation that we don't need to respond to our hunger. All right. Hopefully that quick tip will help you on your path to health. Have a great day.